Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at Corsair's latest power supply, where they're pretty much going to be trying to reinvent the wheel, and that is the RM1200X shift. They are doing a range of wattages though, but I have the top spec 1200 watt version. And long story short, power goes in the back, and then rather than the cables going straight through and then coming out this side, they come out the side. And it's the first time we would have ever seen that. And that does mean that you can't rotate the power supply whichever way you want. You can only have it fanned down, which I know will please a lot of you guys out there because some of you think that's the way it has to be. And in reality, there is no has to be. But it does mean that you do need to be aware. Some people still get confused and think that the uh, power supply is actually an intake for the rest of the case. Whereas the fan goes in the top of the power supply and it actually exhausts out the back where the, main, um, the mains power feed is. So it's in the big fan and then out the little bit at the back, exhausting away from your case. Now I'm not telling you that to teach you to suck eggs or suck lemons, it's just because it still comes up that people think that a power supply is actually a source of air intake for the case when in reality it goes the other way also the fans don't really spin that much at all and haven't done for a long time even with a gold rated power supply but even less when you go up to titanium and platinum rated because this power supply is a gold rated power supply meaning that we're going to be expecting 90 percent ish efficiency but you will see in a, in a minute when we put it onto the, or I show you the results from the Sun Moon, that actually goes a little bit more. But let's have a closer look in depth at some of the cabling. Now the cables are all black, flat, um, and just very understated, plastic, no braided, no nothing particularly special about them. But because we have these new connectors down the side, and they are new connectors, they're a Corsair Type 5 now, or Gen 5 I should say, the connectors on the power supply end are significantly smaller than we have been used to in the past. What this is going to mean is that there are no completely individually braided cables available at the time of launch. I have asked Corsair if they are going to be support them, and I literally got the line from the Corsair sort of like PR Bible in that, oh, we can't talk about unreleased products or, so basically, maybe, maybe not. But I then went to NAS Cable Mod and they were saying that they were going to be looking to support this as soon as they possibly can do. So um, Cable Mod will probably come out with new cables first and then Corsair will come out some later on. I do think that they're going to need them though, if I'm honest, not need them, but the black cables are very safe and will do the job. Uh, but the 12 volt PWR cable, the, the actual material that they've put on the wires themselves is different to the rest of the pack. It's like they've added this in later or it's been made in a different factory or something because it is very noticeable that it doesn't match the other cable set. And that kind of annoys me a bit, if I'm honest. The other thing that I will say with the new smaller connectors is it, it's ringing kind of alarm bells in uh, an NVIDIA 4000 series 12 plus 4 pin uh, way. In that, I, I think we're going, we may end up with people who haven't connected them the power supply end properly like we have been having them with people not connecting them on the, uh, the opposite end with the graphics cards themselves. Um, because at the end of the day, you, uh, you have double the chance of getting it wrong for starters because you have two connectors, one in for the 12V8 PWR, and then you have the one for the graphics card end. Uh, and it goes in the normal PCR Express slots where the other ones have that I've tested today because I have to use PCR Express with the Sun Moon. Uh, uh, but like I said, it's, where the connectors are so small, it's then making me worry that people might not get them pushed all the way in. It's been possible with graphics cards. It could be possible with uh, the actual things. Now this could then mean we have power supply 
end issues or overloads at the other end. So it's, I know I'm being a little bit scaremongering, but I didn't think we'd have problems with cables not being connected properly, but that obviously has happened. So uh, with now two cables, the power supply end, you've not only doubled the possibility, but possibly tripled it because you've got two one end, one the other end, and you can get them all not plugged in properly. So uh, please do make sure you push them all the way home. Make sure it's driven right the way in. That's what she said. I know people are screaming, but just make sure that they are completely clicked all the way there. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, God, Tom, we are capable of doing this. And that is absolutely fine. But if I can stop one possible problem just because I uh, accentuated this, that's all I want at the end of the day. Oh, that would be amazing or, or, you know, whatever. I just don't want any of you guys to have problems. So please make sure you push your cables all the way home. Now, the whole time we have been filming, we have been pulling just over 100 watts from uh, the power supply itself. But this here is how much we've been pulling from the wall, which is 126. And that gives us an 83.2% efficiency because we are only pulling 20% of the power supply's possible uh, wattage. And uh, actually, I do a pull. Yeah, no, it is 20%. 20%, 10%, sorry. So we're 100 watt, then we go 200 watt for 20%. My apologies. So, and I can flick between the two really quickly like this, there you go, 600 watt, and there's 1200 watt, and you can now see that the fan has just started. But we'll go back to our 100 watt. So this is our efficiency, this is our power in, this is our power out, and this number here, just up here, is our millivolts of ripple across the 12 volt rail. So, the numbers that we want to be checking are going to be the 240 watt, or ish, for the 20% test, then we have a 50% test, then we have a 100% test. Now at 20% load, I got 89.1% efficiency and 6.2 maximum millivolts up here. And you can see it's just plonking its way through, happy as Larry, but because we've started the fan, it will continue. The only way we can get the fan to stop is by turning the power supply off, completely, you'll see the fan stops, and then we can easily flick it back on again. Now you may get an initial first burst with the power supply fan, but then it normally slows itself down. There we go. So, back up to 20% load, we'll flick straight into 50% load, 600 watts or there or thereabouts. Uh, we do use a power supply calculator for this, and I always just follow the power supply calculator, which is uh, an Excel sheet which tells you the numbers to put into the power supply tester itself. And it's normally just below the actual 20, 50, and 100%. I can change it so it would be exactly 600 watts, but I've never really messed around with it too much uh, because it scares the life out of me. Anyway. 91.9 visible here. For the most part of the testing that I was doing, I got 91.8. You can get that 10% uh, out of, or sorry, that tenth, I should say, by the power supply fan actually starting running and not. Um, but, and then at the top here, I did see a maximum of 13.8 millivolts of ripple. Now, if I flick up to 100%, you'll see that we're just shy, we're about seven watts below 1200 watts power supply fan has instantly started going absolutely crazy 89.8 up here although you will see it occasionally flick up to 89.9 which was the result i took and the millivolts up here you can see it's on 24 25 there um, it does vary a fair bit sometimes it will go down to like 23 sometimes as you've seen it will give a very very quick burst up to 25 as well. Now, uh, I've not seen a millivolt result like this since the original HX1000, but obviously the HX is, does sit, or used to sit, still does sit, above the RM. So you've kind of got HX old school performance in an RM labeled power supply now. Now, the reason why the millivolt is slightly higher than you may have seen with the other ones is 
In reality, there are no capacitors on the cables, which we did see with a lot of the RM power supplies of old, but also it's a non-digital power supply, which you may have seen with some of the AX power supplies as well. But, uh, like I said, 24, 25-ish on the millivolts, and then you're looking at about 89 on the actual load. But the most important one for the efficiency for us was the 50%, and that was above 90% uh, percent, uh, efficient. So it's actually doing pretty damn well compared to what's actually required to pass the tests. Now, with the tester off, uh, it's some of the highest ripple I have seen in a while. Uh, but you do need to remember that the RMs are a, uh, a gold rated power supply from Corsair, but it's also one of the lower models because you, you've got RM, then you've got HX, and then you did get AXI back in the day as well with like the titanium and the platinum level ones. So it's not going to be the best ripple suppression that they uh, will have across the board because it's one of the models lower down. Nevertheless, it was a little bit higher than I was expecting. Not as bad as the original RM, um, which you can see there was like the millivolts was like 40 uh, millivolts plus, but more than I may have expected for a modern power supply. But we don't know how this configuration change is going to be uh, affecting performance. Uh, it did do quite well at 20% if you paid attention to the grass very well. And then once you got above 60, 70% load, the millivolts went up rapidly. Uh, and it's almost like the voltage suppression inside, which to my layman's understanding would be capacitors, it's almost like it got overwhelmed. Now they did solve this uh, some years ago by adding capacitors to the cables themselves but it would appear that they've stopped doing that probably on a cost exercise because there was a point in time where it was getting difficult to even get capacitors um, but also the complexity of having to wire them into the cables themselves would have driven cost up so I think not having them is a case of uh, cost saving uh, but I do think that the, the ripple itself is probably something to do with the um, orientation of what's going on inside. But that is just a gut feeling. And I'm sure John Jarrell or Johnny Guru, whatever you want to call him, will be straight onto Skype to tell me off if I've got something wrong, which I would welcome. Because with all due respect, when John comes to school you, you sit down, you listen, you take notes. Uh, and uh, I would welcome any of that, if I'm completely honest. Now, I, the, the whole point with the shift is got to be the new, uh, um, basically, output that I want to call it. So I think it's going to be all about aesthetics. And I'm very, very for that. I just wish Corsair had thought about having individually braided cable kits available at launch to launch with the power supplies, so that you did have the choice of going and grabbing one on the day of launch or soon after and then being able to get a cable kit that suits your rig as well because as it stands if you buy this now there are no options and you have to go standard cables because the the actual fitment on the power supply itself is like nothing else that they have produced to the point where the cable mod and waiting to try and get one so that they can produce their own cables and i did ask corsair about it and they like i said already they've given me the line um so a very welcome change because it has been so very generic uh, for ever really so the fact that they are trying something new i can commend them for and that's why i'm going to give it the Corsair Innovation Award. Fair play to them for trying something different. It's just a shame that they didn't have cables available at launch, and it's such a shame that the 12 volt PWR or high volt PWR, whatever we want to call it anyway, the 12 plus four pin for NVIDIA's, this so very clearly didn't match everything else, and that just made my teeth itch. So it's a shame that wasn't fixed, and it's a shame we didn't have those, but commend them nevertheless. Uh, and I think this is also the layout with the fan down is just going to drive home that people think that this has to be this way because they've designed it this way and everything else has to be like this. Um, 
when it doesn't. Uh, the only thing I will say is with a lot of, well, another thing that I will say is with a lot of cases having vents above so that you can see into the power supply or there's airflow for the power supply if you flip it the other way around. This sticker here could and probably will be seen in a lot of power supplies and I kind of don't like it. It's a shame that this wasn't a magnet or easy, easily removed because I know it's like a legal requirement that it has to be there, but to be able to see this through the vents inside my case, this again would be something that would drive me absolutely nuts. It's a shame we can't decide whether we want it on there or not. I know if we were to peel it off, it would quite literally ruin the warranty because the serial number's on it. But again, that is just be me being very picky. But that is my review for its boxes on the floor. Ha, let's have a look. See, look, we are super, super professional. Um, but that's my review for the Shift Series RM1200X. Please bring us cables. Please make this match. And then I will be even happier. But for now, at least, this is the tiniest one. Haven't had a fire, so that's always a good time. Out. Ding! Love you, sis.